In this video, we're going to look at damping in simple harmonic motion. Now, normally if you set something oscillating and just leave it, over time the oscillation will die away. And that's because of something called dissipative forces. This is any force, such as air resistance or friction, that causes energy to be removed from the oscillating system, and therefore reduces the amplitude of the oscillation. And if an oscillating system experiences these dissipative forces, we say that it is damped. Now there are different types of damping. The most common type of damping that you are likely to see, and this would include something like a pendulum left swinging or a child on a swing, is called light damping. And in light damping, we see that over time the amplitude of the oscillation is decreasing and in fact it's actually decreasing by the same amount or percentage each time it's an exponential decrease but you'll notice that the time period the time for one complete oscillation remains the same and so if you were to graph what this looks like you'd get the graph that we have to the right where the amplitude is decreasing by the same amount each time. The yellow lines that you can see are our exponential decay function. <clears throat> and it'll take many, many oscillations to get back to zero. But the key thing to remember is that the time period remains constant and the amplitude decrease is the same amount each time. And when you are drawing this graph, make sure you keep the time period constant. So, here's a little video that shows an example of a mass spring system and how it decays over time under light damping. You can see it's decreasing by the same amount each time. The time period is remaining constant. And it fits into this exponential decrease curve. The next type of damping we're going to look at is called heavy damping. Now, heavy damping occurs in such a way that you do not get oscillations. So an example of this would be a mass on a spring in really, really thick viscous oil. We start by pulling our pendulum to its amplitude and it comes back to the equilibrium position but never begins at the next part of the oscillation. And so if you look at the graph on the right, it starts at maximum amplitude and takes a long time to get back to equilibrium. This is heavy damping. Critical damping is actually used quite a lot, particularly in vehicle suspension. If we look at the video, for critical damping, I'm going to pull it back. It comes very quickly back to the equilibrium position. In fact, it comes back to the equilibrium position in less than half an oscillation. So if you look at the graph to the right, it immediately dips back to the equilibrium, but doesn't complete a full oscillation. This is very important because if you imagine that you're in a car and you ride over a bump, you want a system that is going to minimise the effect of those bumps. It's going to bring you back to equilibrium as quickly as possible without setting you oscillating. And that's why critical damping is very important. This is something you're expected to be able to reproduce in an exam. This is showing the three graphs for light damping in green, heavy damping in blue and critical damping in red superimposed over each other. And again, notice that for critical damping, the red line, it comes back to the equilibrium position, but does not then complete any further oscillations. And an example of critical damping in action can be seen here. Rather than just using a normal spring system, where every time you go over a bump, you'd get a light damping effect and you'd oscillate up and down a bit, we have a system where we have pistons that are in oil to reduce friction within the chamber and that compress a gas at the bottom each time you go over a bump. Once that gas has been compressed, it will expand again and it will do this very quickly, bringing the system back to equilibrium 
but not allowing an oscillation to take place. Critical damping in action.